The Pikadev ultrasonic rangefinder uses sound waves to measure the distance to an object. This is like how bats can echolocate or how submarines use sonar. The sensor emits a high-pitched sound wave that travels through the air to some object. It reflects off the object and comes back to be received by the sensor. The rangefinder measures the duration of that round trip and uses the speed of sound to calculate a distance. That also means these sensors work best when pointing perpendicular to smooth surfaces. Angled surfaces can reflect sounds away, giving spurious readings. And soft materials may dampen the reflected sound or not reflect any sound at all. Water is actually a useful surface, and so you sometimes see these sensors being used to measure the height of liquid in a tank. G'day, I'm gonna show you how to get started with the Picadev Ultrasonic Rangefinder and a Raspberry Pi. We'll connect these two together and get some example code running to measure distance. And then we'll also remix that code. But first, a bit more about the rangefinder. The Picadev ultrasonic rangefinder consists of two parts. There's the ultrasonic sensor and the smart module. The module features two Picadev connectors for daisy chaining with other Picadev modules. There are four ID switches for address configuration. Make sure all of these switches are off before proceeding. And there's also a user controllable LED on board, which turns on by default, kind of like a power LED. Plug the sensor into the four pin header on the smart module such that it points outwards. If you connect the sensor incorrectly, it may become damaged. To follow along, you'll of course need an assembled Picadev ultrasonic rangefinder, a Raspberry Pi single board computer, a Picadev adapter for Raspberry Pi, and a Picadev cable to connect everything together. Connect your adapter to the Raspberry Pi, and on a Raspberry Pi 4, there'll be an arrow that points towards the ethernet socket. Connect your cable to the adapter, and connect the other end to your ultrasonic rangefinder. Boot up your Pi and make sure that it's ready to run Picadev projects. First go to the Preferences Raspberry Pi configuration menu and under the Interfaces tab, make sure that I2C is enabled. And in Thony, go to Tools, Manage Packages and search for Picadev. and just make sure that you install or upgrade Picadev as necessary. We're ready to measure distance. In the guide, find the measure distance example and copy all of that code into a new script in Thony. I'll save the script to a Picadev directory in my home directory. Measure distance.py. Click the green run button and you ought to see something coming out in the shell. These are the range measurements in millimeters. If I hold my hand in front of the sensor, you can see it's at about 16 to 20 centimeters away. If I right click and show the plotter, we can see that my hand doesn't make a very good target for this. It's not super reliable because I'm kind of soft and squishy. I've got this nice smooth reflecting box and we can see that this makes a much nicer target. We can see that line going up and down much more smoothly as I bring it closer or farther from the sensor. And you might also notice that the LED on board the sensor is flashing. Let's take a closer look at the code. We begin like all Picadev projects do by importing the device module. In this case, Picadev Ultrasonic. We also import a function to create a delay. We initialize the ultrasonic range finder by calling the initialization function and that returns an object. We call that object Ranger. So whenever you see the word Ranger in this script, we're referring to this physical ultrasonic rangefinder. Then there's an infinite loop and we print the attribute Ranger.DistanceMillimeters. So this just returns the latest distance sample in millimeters. If you prefer Imperial, you could print distance inch. Then on the next line, we just toggle the state of the LED by setting the Ranger.LED property to not ranger.led. So this will read the state of the LED and invert it, toggling the LED. That's what's creating that continuous flashing. Running the script again, I'm holding this box about 100 millimeters from the sensor, and you can see we're reading about 100. We're reading 94 millimeters. I can slide this box back to, let's go for 300, and you can see we're within about 10 or 20 millimeters. And that kind of makes sense. We're assuming 
a speed of sound in air to make these distance measurements. And of course that will vary with local weather conditions like air pressure and relative humidity. It also changes the temperature too. You can see as I slide that all the way out to as far as my ruler goes, which is at about 450 millimeters, and we're within about 15 mil. Okay, so we can measure distance. Let's actually do something a little more practical. Let's create a visual indicator when the ranger is measuring less than 100 millimeters. We can turn the LED on if something gets too close to the sensor. That's pretty easy to do. Here, we're already setting the state of the LED and we're setting it to not LED, to toggle it. But we could put an expression here that evaluates to true or false. In this case, we could set it to ranger dot distance in millimeters is less than 100. Because this expression will evaluate to true or false, we can just pass that directly into ranger.led. We run the code. We can see that the LED is off to begin with. If I bring my target in, slowly, slowly. Oh, there it is. We're just on the changeover point. And now we're definitely closer than 100 millimeters. And as I pull it back, the LED turns off again. Now it's also possible to run multiple ultrasonic rangefinders on the same PikaDev bus. Recall that we're already working with a rangefinder that has all its ID switches off. To add a second rangefinder, we first need to set a unique ID. For this example, we'll set ID switches one and three. Then daisy chain the new rangefinder onto the PikaDev bus. Now in the code, we can initialize the two different rangefinders the first one I'm calling range A and passing the ID argument with all zeros to indicate that all the ID switches are off. The second one I'm calling range B. It has ID switches one and three in the on position. And so the ID argument has ones in the first and third position. The ID argument matches the switches. When we run the code, we can now sample and plot two different ranges independently. Now there's all sorts of practical projects you could do from here. Perhaps you could upgrade this project to use an audible alert if something is getting too close to the sensor or to trigger an alert if somebody walks through a door. You could create a musical instrument that you can play without touching. Be sure to check the article for some project inspiration. And there you have it, using sound to measure distance. If you have any questions or just want to share a cool PikaDev project that you're working on, then tell us about it over in the forums. Until next time, happy making.